Hi guys, this is Gregor for Personas, and today I want to talk to you about the core fundament of the whole workflow philosophy of Studio One, if you will, which is drag and drop. Drag and drop essentially describes the process of dragging something with your mouse button onto something else and get the expected result. One of the most famous examples for this workflow that most Studio One users are familiar with is the process of adding, removing, or copying instruments and effects. For example, let's say that I want to have a bass synthesizer in my song that I want to play straight away as fast as possible. It's as easy as going to the instrument browser in Studio One, then selecting your desired synthesizer, dragging that into the next available song space with your mouse, and you can simply start playing. Same goes for effects. Let's go to the Effects tab. Let's assume that I want to add some distortion to this. Then I can just drag this distortion onto this instrument track, and there I go. That easy. Same goes for removing or copying effects around. Let's say that I have multiple audio tracks or something like that, and I want to add the same distortion to all of them at once. It's probably not a very practical scenario, but bear with me. Then I could just select a multitude of them by holding down Shift and then dragging it over. That's going to copy it to all of these. Likewise, if I want to remove a plugin, I can just hold down Command on a Mac or Control on a Windows PC and then drag away. And it's as easy as that to remove any amount of plugins. What's also really cool is that if you drag an effect to the send section of a track instead of the insert portion, then Studio One doesn't just create the insert, it does so on a separate effects channel that your channel that you want to affect is sending to. So effectively, you separate the effect that you want to apply onto its own dedicated channel. And that way you can, for example, low cut your reverb without also low cutting your vocal that has this reverb. But there's a dozen different ways in which you can use this very simple principle of dragging something with your mouse onto something else and get the expected behavior that you might not be aware of yet and some of my favorites I want to show you today. I hope you enjoy. So one of the most used drag and drop features of Studio One for me from a creative standpoint is voice to MIDI as I like to call it. So I just have an audio track here. I could also just import a voice memo from my phone. It would be the same workflow. And now I'm just going to sing a melody uh, that I can then transform into MIDI notes right away, which is sometimes super handy depending on the complexity of what you're singing. I'm just going to go with uh, something very simple here. Da -da 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 -da. All right, that was probably way off, but this is just for demonstration. Now we're going to edit with Melodyne. That's Command and M on a Mac or Control and M on the Windows PC. There we go. And now I just want to make sure that I sort of got the pitches right. All right, so I'm just going to go ahead, click here to um, set the pitch center. Quickly see if this is correct. Da, 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 da. Almost. Da, da, da. Da, 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 da. That's what I wanted. And you can hear that this sounds very unnatural now, but it doesn't matter because I don't want to keep this recording. This is just so that I have this lead melody for the synthesizer that I'm about to add. So to do this, once again, drag and drop, I just got to take the high from Urs Heckmann for this example, drag that into my song. Directly into the next available song space is uh, far enough. You don't have to drag it all the way over here to the track list, which I often see people do. Um, also, if they have a widescreen setup, which part of me dies inside when I see it. Okay, so just drag in very close proximity to the song window. That's enough to create an instrument track. And then just drag, check it out, this audio event here to the instrument track. And now the Hive is playing exactly what I was singing there. <laughs> And that's very, very useful. You can also bring in like guitar solos or something like that and convert them straight into media this way. It's genius. Often when you think like it can't be that easy, I dare you to try it anyway because chances are it might actually work exactly like you expect. Let's say you want to copy the entire effects chain on this channel onto another channel. Surely it can't be as easy as just dragging from this handle here onto another channel, but it is. Same with the send effects. You want to drag all of these send effects over to this channel here. Well, you might be used to dragging it over like this one by one, but Studio One goes further. Simply go to the handle here and then drag over and copy all of the sends at the same time all together. But we don't stop there. So for example, this instrument track here. If I want to render that to audio immediately, it's as easy as dragging it to an audio track. 
And likewise, it's as easy as this to drag it back from the audio track onto an instrument track. So you're always still able to access the MIDI notes of the rendered audio, even if the rendered audio is already printed. That sounds natural, that sounds intuitive, but it actually doesn't work like this in many DAWs. As you keep exploring this concept of drag and drop in Studio One, you'll find it applied even in very sophisticated routing scenarios. Let's look at sidechain compression of an instrument coming from the kick drum. Meaning that every time the kick drum hits, the volume of the pad is being reduced. And you can really create pumping effects from that that you most definitely would know from electronic dance music, for instance. Let's have a listen. Right now the compressor is just attenuating the pad itself and the kick drum has nothing to do with this whatsoever. But that changes as soon as we enable the sidechain. You can do that here from the routing list. Just tick this box and you can already hear that now the gain is being reduced every time the kick drum hits instead of the pad playing and that reducing the gain. So let's say we want to have that same cool pumping effect on the bass as well. Do we really have to repeat the same process over again? No, we don't. Actually, all we do is just drag and drop this compressor here over to our bass track. And pay attention as I'm doing this, what happens here to the send section of the kick drum. Another routing is being added, you see? And that is because the sidechain routings are being remembered as you're copying sidechain compressors around. So you could just set up your kick drum as the main sidechain source for other compressors. And once you've done it, you can just copy that over to any track that needs some pumping and the job is done. This is an incredible time saver for anybody who likes this kind of push and pull in their music. Have a listen. Now we have it on both, right? So once again, just to demonstrate, all I did is just drag and drop this compressor over to the bass. You can immediately hear the result. Super fun to work like this. There are just too many awesome applications for drag and drop. I cannot possibly show all of my favorites in just one episode of Studio One with Gregor. So next time, I hope you tune in again for part two of this series, where we're gonna look at some very advanced drag and drop techniques enabled by Persona Sphere. And we're also going to look at event effects and more, which allow you to, for instance, just give one of the snares in your audio track a reverb and another one a groove delay while keeping everything else unaffected and without any need for automation. I hope to see you then.